and moving on to the oligo that ends the pilocytic and the low grade and high grade gliomas i'll quickly move on to oligo we are running out of time i know that and this is a oligodendroglioma this is a gross tumor section you can see how vascular the tumor is how red the tumor is okay and you can see it is so close to the cortex if you look on the right uh, aspect of the image you can see that the gray white junction is still retained but when it comes to the tumor area it is completely gone gone tumors oligodendrogliomas come to attention very quickly because they are they infiltrate the cortex very fast causing seizures seizures is a very prominent early symptom of oligodendroglioma okay and so they come to medical attention very quickly this was the surgical resection specimen you can see beautifully the tumor reaching all the way up to the surface here near the upper limits of the slide you can see that's where the tumor is going okay so this this is a beautiful gross specimen of a glioma and here is the gross uh, the histology uh, on the left hand panel you can see the classical round looking nuclei and there's a clear space around it what we call as the friday appearance okay and on the right hand side you can see and i didn't show there are two large cells one at each corner one at the upper end and one at lower end you can see there's a prominent nuclei these are the two neurons telling us that this tumor has invaded the cortex and you can see most of the time it has delicate Uh, vasculature you can see the on the left hand panel you can see those y shaped structures these are all delicate capillaries which mimics the, uh, the wire of the chicken coop so that's why we call it capillary uh, vasculature in uh, oligodendroma chicken wire appearance this is why we call it okay so many a times there are subset of cells on the right hand panel you can see that oligos don't look like oligos okay these are gametocytes they have a pink belly next to it in the cytoplasm so this is usually a feature of a astrocytic so many a times when this when the oligos tend to have this uh, increased population of this kind of cells what we call it as mini gametocytes and they can be gfap positive my god it makes uh, i'll tell you it makes a young naive pathologist go down the tubes very fast they call an oligo astro this has happened and we have corrected also not blaming anybody because they are, the cells are like that okay so this is a regular gametocyte of astrocytic tumor on the right hand side we are seeing a oligodendroglioma with mini gametocytes look at the nuclear morphology it will tell is round regular and very heterogeneous with prominent nuclei okay so that's what we are seeing and this is actually a oligo not to be confused with an astro okay so there are the features they are going to grade 2 and grade 3 again these are also i'm not going to go into details i told you if there is only mitosis i look for six or more mitosis for anaplastic category otherwise it falls in the grade 2 category okay so occasionally what happens on the left hand panel you can see there's a stark difference in the cellularity left hand side more cells are there right hand side there is a lower cellularity many a times what happens when the oligos over a period of time they do undergo transformation suddenly you start seeing nodules of hypercellularity appearing where the tumor has taken off and it is becoming more and more aggressive that's the anaplastic transformation begins so in such cases i call it a oligodendroglioma with focal anaplasia and i still call it as a who grade th grade 3 because mitosis in this area if i count they come up to more than 6 as anticipated now we are oligos are the best ones to have if you want to have a glioma first pray for pilocytic second pray for um, oligo last for gbm because these are so good tumors now we measure the outcomes in in not 10 years 15 years patient survive okay most of the tumors uh, majority if you have to identify a oligo as oligo it has to be idh1 positive and it will show retained nuclear expression all the blue all the brown dots are the retained expression for atrx okay idh1 is leading the glioma uh, world now okay so it is a driver mutations commonly seen in gliomas now you can see here idh1 positive the cells are nuclei are blue and the cytoplasm is brown meaning the cytoplasm is expressing idh1 epitopes proteins okay so this is idh positive tumor and it has a oligoid morphology classic it shows retained atrx expression in contrast to astrocytoma which show loss of expression please remember idh positive atrx lost astrocytoma idh1 positive atrx retained is most likely you are dealing with a oligo and you can see it. olic 2 is another stain and one thing you have to remember oligos are not gfap positive usually because oligo means few dendros means processes so processes are the ones that produce gfap positivity so there are fewer processes that's why they are called as oligodendroglia in the first place so they don't 
have GFAP positivity. So to know whether they are glial or not, so we do olic to stain the nuclei highlights and it tells us the glial ontology. And another thing I have found very interesting in oligodendrogliomas is I do synaptophysin. So many oligodendrogliomas do show neuronal expression. And you can see this dot-like staining. Is it appreciable or not? I don't know. Please comment and tell me. There are cells in the center where there is a dot-like structure, brown, and pushing the nucleus on the other side. Okay. So this is called as dot-like positivity. Whenever I see this in an oligodendrogliom, I am 100% certain this will be 1P19Q co-deleted. For some reason, I don't know how the correlation is, but whenever I see this, dot like positivity it automatically tells me that this tumor will be co-deleted for chromosome 1p and 19q and if the fish lab tells you it is negative you go there and have a chat with them and tell them look something is wrong with your system please fix it because i am anticipating a 1p 19q co-deletion in this particular tumor so this is the fish slide. On the left hand side, we have 1P and 1Q. Remember, there are two chromosomes and one arm should be lost of each. Okay. For when it's chromosome 1, it is the P part. And for the 19, it's the Q part. Okay. So be very, very careful. Two are the reference probes. One is the test probe. You can see in most of the cells, there are only one signal green and two reference probes. Okay. So one green signal means one another signal is lost. So it is not showing. So one P is lost here, okay, in this particular picture. On right hand side, we are looking at 19 Q. Now the test probe is in red, reference probe is in green. So whenever there are two probes signals, that means the normal dosage two chromosome. Remember, all chromo chromosomes are paired. So we see two, two copies of them. The test signal is only one, suggesting that there is a loss of one of the signal meaning there is 19q loss so 1p is lost on this side 19q is in, lost on this side with idh positivity and atrx being uh, retained this is a hallmark feature of an oligodendroglioma there are many times where you get or at least subset of times when idh1 comes negative atrx retained but 1p 19q is co-deleted it is an oligo, write it as oligo. Don't wait for IDH1 positivity. A subset of oligos have IDH2 mutation, which the current antibody does not address. So you may be dealing with a subset of oligos that are showing IDH2 mutations, but not IDH1. Ideally, it is triple positive, what we call it as IDH positive, ATRX retained, and 1P19Q correlated. And a subset of oligodendrogliomas that have one more mutation called as a TERT mutation. That means if they have turned bad news, they progress very fast. Okay, the small subset do show what is called as turd mutations, T-E-R-T, turd mutations. Okay.